Raised by wolves with canine DNA in his blood. Having trained more than 24,000 vets. Helping you and your fur babies thrive. Live in studio, it's Pet Talk Today with Will Bangura. Answering your pet behavior and training questions. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host and favorite pet behavior expert, Will Bangura. Good Saturday morning. It's February 20th. Thanks for tuning in and letting us be part of your Saturday morning. I'm Will Bangura, and you're listening to Pet Talk today on 1100 KFNX, where we take your calls and answer your pet behavior and training questions each and every Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. Do you have a crazy cat or an out-of-control dog that desperately needs some training and behavior help? Are you fed up with your pet just not listening? Maybe you've got a bird that's bonkers, a rabbit with bad habits, or a temperamental turtle. It doesn't matter what the problem is. That's what we do here on Pet Talk Today. I'm here to help you deal with all of your pet behavior problems. Call me right now and learn how to correct those unwanted behaviors. Pick up your phone and give me a call. If you're in Phoenix or the surrounding area, the number to call is 602 602- Two seven seven five three six nine. That's six zero two two seven seven KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix can call me toll free throughout the state of Arizona at eight six six five three six eleven hundred. Hey, Brittany, how are you? Good. Good morning. How are you? Good. I'm good. I had a good week. Um, actually, yesterday was busy. We had uh, people over to clean the windows professional window cleaners we've never done that oh nice yeah and it was so funny because um well we do have these uh, screens that are really dark you know Mm -hmm. to kind of keep the heat from coming in but um hannah my wife she's like they forgot to put the screens back in oh no they put them back in it was just that it was so clean (laughs) it looked like (laughs) it looked like they weren't in there so um those are definitely needed in this arizona heat Definitely, definitely needed that. Um, how's it been this week for you? What, what, what are we hearing on the phone from people calling into Phoenix Dog Training for help? Yeah, this has definitely been a really good and busy week. I have heard a lot of people whose dogs are having a lot of anxiety. Anxiety. Well, maybe we could talk a little bit about anxiety today and in the different um, aspects of um, you know dogs with anxiety issues. Um, what kind of anxiety issues were you hearing about? A lot of anxiety in the car, actually. Okay. Well, we can talk about that today, depending upon um, how things go. If you've got a question out there and you are wanting some help with a pet and some type of behavior problem that you've been dealing with, give us a call. Again, our number is 602 769 Five three, excuse me, six zero two two seven seven five three six nine. That's six zero two two seven seven five three six nine. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and do pet talk news. Today in Pet Talk News, the first article says, Tell me you love me. What animal behaviors really mean? They speak without words, and that says a lot. Your dog tilts its head in a certain way or places a paw just so, and you swear you know what he's saying. Or maybe your cat speaks to you with her body language, rubbing against your leg, purring, and gazing adoringly into your eyes. You just know she's telling you that she loves you. Even a horse can talk without words, nickering when you walk into the barn and wrapping his neck around you looking for a treat. As beautiful is the animal-human bond, Dr. Melissa Bain, professor of clinical behavior at the University of California Davis School of Veterinary Medicine, explained that there's science behind nonverbal communication between species. Starting with cats, picture a cuddly cat in your lap while you enjoy a cup of hot tea and a good book, and the cat is probably purring. This odd rumbling in the throat has been scientifically proven as a sign of contentment in felines. Even big cats regularly exhibit this behavior. 
Your cat might display a high level of comfort by his or her boldness in exploration. If you notice your cat meandering from room to room, looking around seemingly aimless, don't automatically think that the cat's ignoring you. More likely, the cat spent most of the day napping in one spot, but when the owner returns home, a comfortable, happy cat feels protected and safe enough to explore. And then there's the eye kisses with cats. Eye contact means something different for all species, but research points to felines displaying affection by holding their owner's gaze and giving eye kisses. A cat eye kiss is when a cat looks at you, the eyes start closing, and they blink while keeping your gaze. Recent research suggests that you can get your cat to eye kiss by eye kissing them first. According to a study released by the Mammal Communication and Cognitive Research Group at the University of Portsmouth. And then cats, they do licking. Cats love to groom themselves, and when they live in colonies, they'll also groom each other. It's a powerful way of bonding. So next time your cat licks your face at 4 a.m. before pulling the covers over your head for protection, remember, this is a demonstrable way felines express affection. And then they might start pawing and biting. Pawing and biting are ways that cats express affection with each other. When you think petting your cat is going well and sense that your cat is about to become aggressive, it is not necessarily that they have had enough of you. They could just be trying to take the affection to the next level. However, paws and bites do not feel the greatest on our human skin, it is acceptable to gently deflect a behavior with a little nudge and redirection. Also, cats, we all know that they do rubbing and headbutting. When a cat rubs against your head or headbutts you, the automatic assumption is that she's trying to tell you that she cares. Well, science proves it. You're right. The cat is also marking and malingling the scent with hers, just as she would do with a member of her feline family, instinctively moving those scents together. Stephen Tomachek says in his book, Animal Behavior, that it's the highest form of flattery, but something more too. Some people think it's a sign of affection when a cat starts rubbing its head against them. He writes, the cat may like you, but it has another motive. Cats have scent glands all over their faces. When they rub up against you, they're really spreading a chemical message that you belong to them. And then, of course, we have dogs. Dogs are the quintessential love bugs of the domestic animal world. Bold in their affection, whether it's always wanting to know what we're doing, going along with every little thing that we do, snuggling or giving actual kisses, it doesn't take much knowledge to recognize canine human love. However, because dogs in general are so loving, human handlers can mistakenly interpret all canine behavior in this light. Veterinarians warn that learning to read dog behavior is necessary to keep human owners from getting it wrong. Eye contact means something different in every species, but for dogs, it's usually considered a challenge. Pay attention to how dogs play. At best, eye contact is held between two dogs right before a big play move is made. At worst, it happens immediately before a vicious dog bite breaks out. While there are always exceptions to the rule, direct eye contact is something to avoid with a dog you just don't know. Don't forget this includes a dog that you just brought home from the shelter. Until you really know the dog, be careful not to accidentally challenge it with a stare. And then there's the tail wagging. Most people think happy when seeing a dog wag its tail. That read isn't fully incorrect, but depending on the situation, tail wagging can mean something else. A tail wag means stimulation, usually. In the case of a comfortable family pet, happy stimulation. Other times it demonstrates anxiety, fear, or stress stimulation. Always take the full context into account. If a dog's tail is wagging, the eyes are relaxed, and the mouth is softly open with the tongue out, a human is likely reading right saying that the dog is happy. But if the back is haunched or rounded, Bane cautions, hackles raised, eyes darting back and forth, that dog could be considering a bite or attack. A high tail wag with a stiff body is not necessarily friendly, she says as well. Then there's rolling over. Many times a domestic or wild dog rolling over expresses playfulness. A domestic dog coming up to a human he trusts and rolling over shows comfort and a desire for bonding. The behavior also shows a form of submission. Context is key when you are looking at canine body language. And that's Pet Talk News for today. So we've got, uh, what do we got? To, what do we want to talk about? We want to talk about um anxiety mm-hmm. we're going to talk about anxiety and then um do we have any 
email questions? We do. We actually have a handful of email questions. Yes. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a break here in just about a minute. Um, when we come back, let's do that. Let's take a few uh, email questions. If uh, you're listening and you're just joining us, you can give us a call if you've got a question about your pet. The number to reach us is 602-277-5369. That's 602-277-KFNX. If you're outside of Phoenix, feel free to give us a call toll-free. That number is 866 866- Five three six eleven hundred, And as I said, when we come back after our first break, we need to hear from our sponsors in just a second. We'll be taking your calls, answering your email questions, and also we're going to be talking about anxiety. So if you've got a fur baby that stresses out, make sure that you stay with us. When we come back from the break, we're going to be talking about all kinds of anxiety. We'll be back right after these messages. Raised by wolves with canine DNA in his blood, sharing funny tales about your four-legged fur babies, answering questions, some even ridiculous, and taking your calls, it's Pet Talk Today with your host, Will Bangura. To have your questions answered or to comment on today's show, call the KFNX listener line at 602-277-5369. 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix call toll-free 866-536-1100. Now, back to Pet Talk Today with your host and everyone's favorite pet behavior expert, Will Bangura. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, I'm Will Bangura, and you're listening to Pet Talk Today on 1100 KFNX, where we take your calls and answer your pet behavior and training questions each and every Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. Do you have a crazy cat or an out-of-control dog that desperately needs some training and behavior help? Are you fed up with your pets just not listening? It doesn't matter what the problem is. doesn't matter what kind of pet you have. That's what we do here on Pet Talk Today. I'm here to help you deal with all of your pet behavior problems. Give me a call right now and learn how to correct those unwanted behaviors. Pick up your phone. Give us a call. If you're in Phoenix or the surrounding area, the number to call is 602-277-5369. That's 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix, you can call toll-free at 866-536-1100. We actually have a couple callers on the line. Um, let's take Willa in Apache Junction. Willa in Apache Junction. Hey, Willa, welcome to Pet Talk today. How can we help you? Oh, good morning. Good morning. I, uh, I really appreciate all that you do in helping the animals and keeping them in in our homes because they're like family uh, to us. But uh, uh, well, I was wondering, this gal, she had a fall, an accident, hurt her leg, and she needs a little bit of help about she has three dogs, a younger female dog, um, under a year old, I guess has a, going through a mounting behavior with the older male uh, dogs, and uh, she didn't know whether this was something that was dealing with uh, uh, alpha or if there was more or if it was breeding season or, or just what. And then the second part of it is uh, what are they utilizing or what do you recommend for total flea control for the animal and or the house? If you could address those two issues, I'd be greatly appreciative. Sure. Um Starting with the mounting behavior. Now, there's a couple of things, and, and maybe you know the answer to this. Maybe you don't. Are we dealing with dogs that are intact, meaning that they're not spayed and neutered? or I believe they are altered. They're altered. Okay. Yes. And so one of the things that we can find, too, is that, you know, that can be dominance behavior. And yes. it can be the dogs trying to work out some pack structure there. Now, say that again, trying to work out, work out some pack structure. So, oh, pack so structure, dogs, yeah, you know, bonus, they're so. pack animals. Even though domesticated dogs, they're weak pack animals. They're, they're not, you know, wolves 
coyotes, they're very, very strong pack animals, okay? Um, if we were to grab a couple coyotes from one pack and a couple coyotes from another pack and a few other coyotes from another pack and we put them into a dog park, they'd all kill each other. Okay? Ouch. But domesticated dogs, most dogs can go to the dog park and they play and they get along. Well, one of the things that tells us is that over time with domestication and evolution of, um, you know, domesticated canines, that pack drive, I'll call it, is weak, okay? Yeah. And so what happens is in real packs, such as wolves and coyotes, the hierarchy, the structure of that pack is intact. It's solid. It, it stays that way until usually somebody dies, okay? Um, that makes sense. Yeah, but with dogs, domesticated dogs, okay, it's fluid. So, for example, in one context, in one specific situation, you could have one dog. Let's say we got a multi-dog household. You could have one dog that's alpha in one situation and context, and you could have a different dog that is alpha in a completely different context and situation. For example, you may have a dog that um, is primarily trying to um, take advantage of food resources, okay? And that one is being alpha over food. But over toys, there could be a different dog in the household that is kind of dominant over those toys. Um, typically, when we've got, you know, dogs that are altered and they're mounting one another, um, it is an issue of trying to work out that pack structure. And usually, usually if you leave it alone... It works itself out. Now, my question for you is, how long has this been going on? How frequently does it happen? And what's the duration of how long this goes on? And, and what's your friend currently trying to do to stop it? Well, it, it, it was brought to me by someone who I guess is helping her because she had a, an, an injury and the mm-hmm. gal was coming into the house uh, to help her. And so this was occurring, so I, I don't have a lot of information, but she asked me if I could find out to, mm-hmm. because uh, they needed some help there. Mm-hmm. It seems like the, the dogs have been around for at least a few a uh, few years, the one that's uh, exhibiting the behavior is the is the youngest and is the female under a year of of age. <clears throat> and as I said, I believe they're all altered. The other two are are males, mm-hmm. and I would imagine it's probably uh, been going on since they've had the had the animals. And I, I'm thinking a couple of couple of years, but uh, yeah. you know, people don't always notice things, or they have older and have health problems, and things get unaddressed and so i guess this gal that's coming in there wanting to help the situation and i'll give them your number as as well but um uh so if you had any immediate well, uh, uh input to address yeah. and there there's a couple things because you know you had mentioned that your friend you said is injured well, this gal that uh, the gal that i know for is working for yes has an injury okay. uh, and has one of those broken ankle or foot or okay. something so all right so one of the things, I don't care what the problem is, dogs make black and white cause and effect associations. Yes. Okay? And if we're pairing something unpleasant at the exact same time that that behavior is happening, and we consistently do that, then the dog associates that behavior with something unpleasant, okay? And that behavior will extinguish, extinguish itself. Now, the question is, What can we do to correct the behavior? And and some of that depends on, you know, your friend's physical abilities right now, okay? Because there's a couple things. You can put leashes and collars on the dogs, and when they begin that process, you can put upward pressure on that leash and collar, and you can tell them no. Always make sure that you're pairing a verbal correction with a physical correction because eventually that verbal correction will be all you'll need. You won't need that physical correction, but dogs need to be conditioned. So if I, every time I put leash and collar pressure on the dog to stop an unwanted behavior just to make it a little bit uncomfortable, I got to be saying something like off, 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 or no, no, no. I don't need to yell it, okay? Let, let the leash and collar do the work for you. Now, Every dog is going to be a little bit different, you know, temperaments of dogs. There are some dogs that have a very, very soft temperament. You you practically, you know, look at them and point your finger at them. They roll on their back and pee themselves. And then you've got other dogs yes. that have a really hard 
personality. And you could practically hit them upside the head with a two-by-four, and they think it's a fun game. Hey, let's do that again. Yes, let's play some more. Yeah. Now, obviously, we don't want to do any type of correction that's going to cause fear or pain or intimidation. That's or injury, not yes, of course. Right. But, okay, there's a lot of trainers out there that are anti-correction. They won't even tell a dog no because they think that that's abuse, okay? And I'm sorry, but in the world, in the universe, okay, things are, you know, balanced. And and so we take a balanced training approach. There's nothing wrong with correcting a dog if it's done humanely. You imagine a condition the world would be in if there were no correction. Well, Not exactly. even a red light I mean, or a green light. Well, and you know, I was driving here. I was driving to the uh, radio studio today and I noticed there was a police officer on the side of the ro- road uh, with a uh, radar, you know, checking people's speed. So, I mean, there's consequences for people. So I just think it's ridiculous when uh, there are trainers out there that say, well, you can stop every behavior and you can train in every behavior just using treats. And that sounds good in theory, okay? And certainly we want to do a lot of positive reinforcement, but we also use corrections. Hang on the line. We've got to take a quick break for news. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk more about what's going on with uh, your friend's dog's mounting. And we're going to be talking about other questions that you might have regarding your pets. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the news. Raised by wolves with canine DNA in his blood. Sharing funny tales about your four-legged fur babies. Answering questions, some even ridiculous. And taking your calls. It's Pet Talk Today with your host, Will Bangura. To have your questions answered or to comment on today's show, call the KFNX listener line at 602-277-5369. 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix call toll-free 866-536-1100. Now, back to Pet Talk Today with your host and everyone's favorite pet behavior expert, Will Mangura. <laughs> Welcome back. If you're just joining us, I'm Will Bangora, and you're listening to Pet Talk Today on 1100 KFNX, where we take your calls and answer your pet behavior and training questions each and every Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. Do you have a crazy cat or an out-of-control dog that desperately needs some training and behavior help? Are you fed up with your pets just not listening? Well, doesn't matter what the problem is, doesn't matter what kind of pet you have, that's what we do here on Pet Talk today. I'm here to help you deal with all of your pet behavior problems. Call me right now and learn how to correct those unwanted behaviors. Pick up your phone and give me a call. If you're in Phoenix or the surrounding area, the number to call is 602-277-5369. That's 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix, Call me toll-free at 866-536-1100. So we still have Willa in Apache Junction on the line. And then up next, we have Jeff from all the way over in Florida. Oh, Jeff, hold the line. We want to talk to you. So, Willa, are you still on the line with us? I am. Thank you. Okay. So we were talking about the mounting behavior, and we were talking about the fact that, you know, the way behaviors stop. Something unpleasant gets paired with it, and it needs to have really good timing. Um, you got zero to a half a second to pair a correction with the behavior. So basically what that means is we've got to make that correction happen in the act of the behavior, or the dog just doesn't connect the dots cognitively, okay? Um, some dogs are going to respond with a good verbal no, you know, a deep voice, harsh tonality. Um, some dogs, that's not going to phase them. Some dogs, you know, we may need to put a leash and a collar on. We may need to put a little bit of leash and collar pressure on as we say no. Um, and if the dog goes right back into the behavior after we're either giving a verbal correction or a physical correction, what that situation is telling us is that we didn't correct the behavior. We just merely interrupted it. That yeah. the consequence was not something that the dog felt was unpleasant enough to stop the behavior. Um, the other thing that your friend might do, um, you can get these canisters of compressed air. 
You know, I was thinking about if your friend's not that mobile because of that injury, you know, a lot of times the dogs don't like the compressed air sound as well. But the uh-huh. biggest thing is you've got to be consistent. When dogs keep rehearsing the behaviors over and over, um, they get reinforced every time. There's always a reinforcement for a behavior, whether we see it or not. So what I want you to do is go ahead and have your friend try those things and then um, give us a call back. Let us know if that's working. And then, of course, what's really important, we always need to remember when the dog is not doing the unwanted behavior, we need to be rewarding. It's not just about corrections. We need to spend a lot more time rewarding and positively reinforcing calm, good, polite behaviors. So when the dogs are, you know, being good, they're not mounting one another, start playing with them, start giving them love, praise, affection, or give them a treat. So give that a shot. All right. Jeff in Florida. We've got Jeff. Jeff in Florida. Welcome to Pet Talk today. How can we help you, Jeff? Yes, sir. I've got three questions on two cats that we have. Okay. Uh, we've got a, a cat that's a male. Mm-hmm. It'll be two in about September. And then we've got an old female cat, probably born in, I want to say, 02. So it's about 19 years old. Uh, my first question would be, is there anything I can do to calm the young one, uh, which is a male with the old female? And then the other two questions I have is with kitty litter, we get the Perina, or there's a kitty litter that's got clay in it, Mm -hmm. and um, we were thinking about trying to go with a different kitty litter so the dust isn't so bad, and I've heard there's other options out there that are a lot cheaper. And then the other sad question I have is with the older one, I had to take it to the vet probably six months ago to had an infection because of an ingrown nail trying to stay on top of the nails because when they're old you know you don't want to be making too many vet trips so if you've got any um information or any wisdom you can give me on those three issues i'd appreciate it absolutely so first let's deal with the young cat and the older cat um You know, a lot of times people do the wrong type of introductions when they bring a new cat into the home. Um, And then we start dealing with territorial issues. And so sometimes it can be uh, a territorial issue. Um, One of the things that, and I talked about it if you heard the article I was reading in Pit Talk News about how cats like to intermingle their sense and that kind of gives a stronger bond uh to the pack mentality of of felines so one of the things that you can begin to do because there are all kinds of scent glands on their face you can get a sock just a sock put it on your hand and what you want to do is you want to go ahead and rub the face and head of the younger cat with that sock. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and present that more to the older cat. Okay. You can even then start intermingling the scents because they might not be doing it. If the older cat's trying to get away from the younger one because the younger one is harassing it, they may not. All the time. Yeah. All the time. So they haven't intermingled, you know, most likely the scents. If they're not rubbing up against each other, Okay, with their heads, um, then there can be some issues with with territorial stuff. So you can help that process by again rubbing the cat's faces with the socks and just kind of swapping them up back and forth, and you'll find that um, things should get a little bit better. But in addition to that, if you've got a younger cat, um, you've got to create enrichment. Because, you know, that cat's got energy, uh, the cat wants to do a lot of things. So it's important that you get some cat toys and, you know, right. um, a flirt pole. I call it a flirt pole. So it's a stick. It's got a, you know, a rope or a line on it, got a toy. Do a bunch of playing with that. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize, but you can train cats like you train dogs. It's just a matter of creating a system where they understand what it is that you want. You could play some fun games with your cat, um, get some high value food rewards. You can teach a cat to sit just by luring them and putting 
the food by their nose and mouth and just kind of going up and backwards. They'll sit. You can lure a cat into a down position with food and reward them. Um, you can begin to behaviors that they offer. You know, a cat comes running to you. You can label that behavior. You could say, come every time the cat comes and reward the cat. And eventually the reverse happens. You can actually ask for it rather than labeling uh, that particular behavior. Um, but you've got to create more play and enrichment for that younger cat okay. because that cat's okay. bored. Okay. Um, and the other thing too, you know, you may need to intervene on behalf of your older cat, depending upon, you know, how that cat's health is, you know, we don't want, you know, it's a senior cat. We want the cat to have some peace. We want the cat to, you know, be able to relax in its senior year. So you may have to get involved and, and correct the younger cat. Um, Compressed air works really good for that as well. But the biggest thing is giving your younger cat something to do. And then the other thing is what can help is to co-mingle their scents uh, by using the technique of, of having the sock on your hand and rubbing their faces. The other thing... Yeah, they're not Go they're ahead. not doing much of that. What, what, when you say compressed air, what do you mean? Well, you can... Um, Go to, well, and you can get anything on Amazon, but you can go to Home Depot or Staples, you know, when they've got uh, uh, compressed air in a canister and okay. you can like spray keyboards with it. Okay. Okay. Also, there. Oh, that one. Right. Yeah. Right. I know what you mean. They no. don't like okay. that sound. It's like, you know, like a cat hissing. Right. So they don't right. like right. that. Um, okay. and, it, and if you can actually spray that right on the younger cat's shoulder. Okay, it's not going to harm them, but they're going to be like, oh, I don't want to do that. So, and in, in, in worst case scenarios, then you're going to have to go ahead and put a harness on that younger cat, put a leash on it to help kind of manage things, you know, and when that younger cat's away from the older cat, great things need to happen. Lots of play, lots of toys, lots of interaction, lots of treats. When the cat, the younger cat is harassing the older cat, use that compressed air and be very consistent with that. Um, the other thing you can do is um, there's cat appeasing pheromone or feline appeasing pheromone. You can go um, buy that um, on Amazon. You can go into uh, any major uh, pet store like Petco or PetSmart. They've got spray bottles with the cat appeasing pheromone and they've also got these plugins and that can really help uh, the cats to just relax the pheromones that are synthetic they're mimicking the pheromones that a mother cat produces when she has uh, kittens and so that can help calm them down We've got to take a quick break uh, to hear from our sponsors, but if you can stay on the line when we get back, we'll go ahead and address the other questions that you have about the ingrown nail and the kitty litter. I'm Will Bangura. You're listening to Pet Talk Today on 1100 KFNX. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll be taking more of your calls and answering your pet behavior questions. We'll be right back. Raised by wolves with canine DNA in his blood. Sharing funny tales about your four-legged fur babies. Answering questions, some even ridiculous. And taking your calls, it's Pet Talk Today with your host, Will Bangura. To have your questions answered or to comment on today's show, call the KFNX listener line at 602-277-5369. 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix call toll-free 866-536-1100. Now, back to Pet Talk Today with your host and everyone's favorite pet behavior expert, Will Mangura. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. If you're just joining us, I'm Will Bangura. You are listening to Pet Talk Today on the Pulse of Arizona, 1100 KFNX, where we take your calls and answer your pet behavior and training questions each and every Saturday morning from 9 to 
10 a.m. Do you have a crazy cat or an out-of-control dog that desperately needs some training and behavior help? Are you fed up with your pet just not listening? Maybe you've got a bird that's bonkers or a rabbit with bad habits or maybe you've got a temperamental turtle. It doesn't matter what the problem is. doesn't matter what kind of pet you have. That's what we do here on Pet Talk today. I'm here to help you deal with all of your pet behavior and training problems. Give me a call right now. Let's learn how to correct and get rid of those unwanted behaviors for good. Pick up your phone. Give me a call. If you're in Phoenix or the surrounding area, the number to call is 602-277-5369, 602-277-KFNX. Those outside of Phoenix can call me toll-free. That number is 866 866- Five three six eleven hundred. Before we went to break, we were talking to Jeff in Florida, and we were talking to Jeff about his two cats, the younger cat and the older cat. Um, but you had some questions about two other things, kitty litter and um, what was the other one? Uh, the other one was, you know, how, how do you know when it's just so old? I mean, it, it wants to eat. Um, it used, When it was very young, it I think it was an outdoor cat, you know, and it, it does come into the garage and snoops around a little bit. Um, instincts take over. There are some things that it kind of keeps its eye out for, so it doesn't want to wander too far away because of its age. The younger cat is strictly only inside. Uh, so the, because the outdoor cat is so old, or, the outdoor cat is so old, it very, very seldom even wants to come outside. But how do you know when maybe it's, you know, you don't want to ever put a, a, an animal down, but mm-hmm. when it's so miserable, having the younger cat, I'll have to try the sock thing. I'm hoping maybe that'll calm the younger one down. But um, <clears throat> how, how, how do you know when it might be the cat's really not enjoying itself anymore? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a tough question, and it's always it is a tough question. it's always yeah. difficult when you've got a pet, mm-hmm. you know, and they're part of your family, and you love them, and they've been around, and in right. this case, right. nine, nineteen years, you know, typically, yeah. typically, when an animal is about ready to kind of uh, transition, um, they will typically stop eating, they'll typically stop drinking, uh, they'll typically hide in an area, kind of. Uh, in, you might find them in a closet or, you know, they're going into a small area and it might be an area where they don't normally go. Um, but, okay. but, you know, it's got its spots, but it's, you know, you know where it is. So it's not doing that yet. Yeah. And it's, if it's eating and if it's drinking, um, and you know, we don't have any other, you know, uh, physical issues that are apparent. And sometimes too, you know, when they get older, they could have some painful conditions. And, and if you had, uh, a new situation where there's all of a sudden this excessive yowling, excessive meowing okay. where it wasn't there before and maybe they're not eating, they're not drinking, um, you know, then it's time to maybe bring them to the veterinarian and have that conversation, you know, um, okay. because – Eventually, you know, it really comes down to two things. It comes down to the cat's quality of life, okay, is, is the number one thing um, that you are looking at. And then, you know, are we dealing with something that, you know, is a medical issue that hey, is the cat just getting older? Or maybe if there's blood work, we start realizing, oh, there is some kind of disease. There is some kind of illness. But it's always tough. But the biggest signs that you look for, um, not eating. Not drinking, hiding in a spot where okay. it, where it wasn't before. <clears throat> the other question I think you had asked about kitty litter. Yes, you're looking for kitty litter that doesn't produce as much dust. We've yeah, we've got some hardwood floors, and particularly the the, the younger one seems to go in and out of it more often. Um, we've got tile, you know, twenty feet from the hardwood floors, but something that maybe would would be a little more. Uh, <clears throat> Wouldn't let the litter carry into the house as much, you might say. Sure. So there's a couple. A things. little less. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> first of all, the kitty litter that I would recommend would be Arm and Hammer dust free kitty litter. Dust. Yeah. Dust free. Uh, yep. Arm what and Hammer. Are like pellets? Are those like pellets? Um, now or? they do have pellets, and you could try uh-huh. using pellets. But if your cats weren't um, initially trained with pellets, they may or may not want to do it. So okay. if you're going to try pellets, and obviously the pellets aren't going to be, you know, producing that dust, 
I would make sure that I had two litter boxes with the old litter, two litter boxes with the new, and try to get them using the new before I start taking away the old. But the other thing, they have litter boxes that have like covers over them. Right. And they kind of right. have an opening where they go in there. And so when they're kicking around in there, burying, you know, their, their prize, um, that won't kick up as much and get around as much. Um, but yeah, you could try the pellets. Um, I don't know that the older cat's going to want to do the pellets. Maybe with the younger cat, you could go ahead and uh, give that a try. But either try pellets or, like I said, the Arm & Hammer Dust Free is pretty good. Um, and getting um, a litter box that has kind of a cover on it helps. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can get a water sprayer and you can spray that down a little bit throughout the day, but that's kind of inconvenient. So maybe the pellets, maybe the Arm & Hammer uh, dust-free. But give those things a try with your cats. Like I said, see if you can co-mingle the scents, and you're going to do that with a sock on your hand and rubbing their faces together, or rubbing your sock on each cat's face individually, but then also intermingling those scents with them. And again, you've got to spend a lot more time playing with that younger cat. If every time the younger cat wants to harass the older one, you're out there and you're playing with a toy on a stick or something like that, now you're changing that association. The thing that people need to remember, behaviors don't change overnight. We've got to be consistent. It takes a little while, but if you if you do that, you should have some good success. So give that a shot. I appreciate the call. Do us a favor. Work on that for a little bit. We always love it when people call us back and they report back whether it helped, whether it didn't help. Give us a call back. Let us know how things go. But I appreciate the call, Jeff. Have a great day. All right. What do we got going on now? Should we, should yeah, we do we, some email questions? We do. Yes, we actually have a ton of email questions. Okay. Um, this is actually one of my favorite questions. So Mary in Phoenix says, my puppy is 10 weeks old. What is a good age to start training her? Well, here's the thing. The earlier, the better. Mm -hmm. Always the earlier, the better. And people, I'm going to talk about a problem there is out there. Everybody thinks that their their pets shouldn't be trained until they're 16 weeks or six months of age. I hear that all the time, and I'll, I'll explain why. But we've got um, a situation where... Repeat that question again because I want to make sure I understand it 100%. My puppy is 10 weeks old. What? How young? Okay, how young? You could start training at three weeks of age if you had that. Now, nobody has the puppy at three weeks mm -hmm. of age, but good breeders, as soon as those puppies open up their eyes, they start training them. Now, obviously, you can't do any physical corrections you know, with a puppy, so everything you're doing with a young puppy is going to be purely positive reinforcement. And you know what I like to do? There's a principle in training called capturing and shaping. Capturing and shaping is taking a behavior that your pet offers on its own and you positively reinforcing that behavior. Any behavior that continuously and consistently gets positive reinforcement, the animal is going to want to repeat. They're going to want to do that over and over once they realize, hey, there's payout for doing this behavior. Think about even, I don't care, 10 weeks, 8 weeks, think about how many times a day your puppy comes running to you. Think about how many times a day your puppy sits on its own. Think about how many times a day your puppy lays down on its own. Think about how many times a day your puppy picks something up in its mouth and drops something. All of those behaviors we can capture. They're, the puppy's giving the behavior, offers a sit on its own, label it, say sit, give it a treat. The puppy lays down on its own, label that behavior, down, give it a treat. The puppy comes running to you on its own, say, come, give it a treat. The puppy picks up something in its mouth, say, fetch, give it a treat. The puppy drops something out of its mouth, say, drop, give it a treat. So that process of capturing behaviors is really, really powerful. You'd be amazed on what you can teach a young puppy. They're like little sponges. They love to learn. But you want to make sure that you're not asking for a behavior 
that hasn't had a label put on it, that hasn't been positively reinforced. But if you do that for a while, you can start asking for it, and they'll actually do it. Give that a shot. We are just about out of time today. I want to thank everybody that called in. Thank you for your email questions. I'm Will Bangura. You've been listening to Pet Talk today. Join us next Saturday where we'll be back again from 9 to 10 a.m. answering your calls, taking your pet behavior and training questions, and helping your fur babies thrive. Have a great weekend. We're out of here. News, talk, sports. The Pulse of Arizona, 1100 KFNX, Phoenix.